No matter how ardent your prayers are, no matter how great your faith, there are times that those prayers just seem to go unanswered. Hello. But does this mean that you are not a good enough Christian? That there's some kind of unconfessed sin or maybe God just doesn't care about you? What's up everybody? It's Ian again. Thank you so much for coming back to Church Door. We're so glad that you're here today. Now if you're here for the first time, we want to encourage you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because every time we put out a piece of content, it'll come directly to you. We also want you to know that we have a team of people here every single Sunday at 1130 Central Standard Time that want to pray with you, want to walk with you. Whatever you're going through today, just reach out to us in the chat box or you can text prayer to the number that you see coming up on the screen right now. You know, there's nothing more mesmerizing than staring into a flame of a beautiful campfire. When I was a kid, I remember many evenings in my backyard just laughing and talking it up around a glowing pile of wood. Surviving the elements here in the backyard. One night, me and my buddies got a little brave and we thought it would be a great idea to jump over the fire. Yeah, I know, great idea, not so much. Our fun was suddenly cut short when my buddy kicked an ember up on one of my other friends sitting near the fire. It burnt right through his shirt and made a severe blister on his skin. Of course, this was the night that I learned, you play with fire, you get burned. Fire is serious business. Many of you are facing some serious fires in your life, and the reality of getting burned is very real to you right now. Maybe it's a job loss or disease or family or friendships loss. Whatever it is, you're probably feeling the heat. Today we're jumping into the third chapter of Daniel where there's a familiar story. As a matter of fact, maybe so familiar that we bring our own preconceived notions to that story and just kind of shrug it off as like, oh yeah, that's the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Hey, you dusty? Nope. The temptation is to simply write this story off as a tale of enduring a trial. That if we just trust enough, have strong enough faith, and we pray hard enough, then things will work out. Yet for many, we've lived life long enough and followed Christ for long enough, we realize no matter how ardent your prayers are, no matter how great your faith, there are times that those prayers just seem to go unanswered. But does this mean that you are not a good enough Christian? That there's some kind of unconfessed sin or maybe God just doesn't care about you. Have you ever felt like that? You know, about six years ago, I too had a crisis of faith. It was shortly after we first moved to Northern Indiana and we were looking for help in our production department. And here came this bubbly guy named Clay. Now Clay and I had a lot of things in common. Our love for creativity as well as hunting in the outdoors. But on top of all of that, Clay was just one of the best co-workers in ministry a guy could ask for. He was super dependable and he was always excellent at whatever he did. You wouldn't have known it because he never really made light of it and he didn't seem like there was anything wrong with him, but Clay had a major heart problem. So much so that he needed a heart transplant. The more I got to know Clay, plan a summer trip to do some fishing in Michigan, walk with his family through the loss of his father, the harder I began to pray, God, please find a transplant for Clay. He deserves it. He's a fantastic guy. He loves you and he shows that to others. Then what seemed like out of the blue, I got a call. They had found a heart for Clay and they were going right in for a transplant. Well, you better believe that I began to pray ardently. God, be with Clay through this dangerous procedure. And I believe that you have this in your hands and that it'll all work out. The next day I received a call from a coworker and I was completely ready to hear how Clay was doing great and was already in recovery. But my heart sank as they said, Clay didn't make it. How could this be? My faith was not in question. I mean, I know what God can do, but why didn't he in this situation? His family asked me to speak at his funeral and I couldn't even get one single word out. It was so much so that his mom came up to console me, handing me a tissue, patting me on the hand and saying, everything's gonna be all right. I, I felt like a blubbering fool, but my heart was just so confused. This is where I believe Daniel 3 will come in handy, especially if you're the one facing a fire like this. Within these scriptures, we find a curious phrase that often gets overlooked. 
The simple phrase that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uttered before the king, which was, but if not. Many of us have been through very hard, atrocious moments in our life, or maybe we're going through one right now, and we need to discover the power of that simple phrase, but if not. Throughout this chapter, we will discover the keys of how to handle unanswered prayer when you're facing the fires of life. When the answer to our prayer is in the tune of, but if not, and the fire does end up consuming. Within this story, we see the indicators of great faith despite the outcome. So let's dive in. King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue 90 feet high and 90 feet wide, and it's set up on the plain of Dura in the area of Babylon. Then he called for the leaders, the governors, assistant governors, captains of the soldiers, people who advised the king, keepers of the treasury, judges, rulers, and all other officers in his kingdom. He wanted them to come to the special service for the statue he had set up. So they all came for the special service and stood in front of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the man who made announcement of the king said in a loud voice, people, nations, and those of every language, that is what you are commanded to do when you hear the sound of the horns, flutes, lyras, zithers, harps, pipes, and all other musical instruments. You must bow down and worship the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Anyone who does not bow down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. In these scriptures, we get an idea of the challenge that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were set up against. It was a challenge of who will you truly worship? Nebuchadnezzar was calling all people to bow down to his massive golden idol. Now, this is important because in the previous chapter, Daniel had interpreted a dream for the king. In this dream, there was a huge statue and the head, which was made of gold, represented Nebuchadnezzar and the power of his kingdom. Yet in the dream, the rest of the statue, as it went down to the feet, was made of increasingly more brittle materials, which told the story ultimately that no matter how powerful Nebuchadnezzar was, that the kingdom would ultimately end in shambles. So why did Nebuchadnezzar build a fully golden statue? It was kind of like a thumb in the eye of God. Oh God, you just wait and see. Things will not end up the way that you have said. I will defy you and prove you wrong. So he builds a statue that isn't just a head of gold, but all gold. So what he is calling the kingdom to bow down to is him, his own self-confidence, his idea over God's idea. And this is a key point in our discussion of unanswered prayers. Many times the, the brokenness that we feel in the backside of an unanswered prayer is not because we didn't believe enough. It's because we didn't really want God's will. We wanted our own outcome. So here's my first thought for today. Self-confident prayers lead to a deep sense of personal loss. Let's be honest, a lot of times when we find ourselves facing a fire in life, our prayer is not, God, your will be done, no matter what the outcome is. No, our prayers are full of faith towards our own desires, not faith in God. Pastor Brian Chapel said it like this, faith is not confidence in our belief, but confidence in our God. Our belief, our hope, our confidence is often misplaced. Therefore, when we look at this story, we're not like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We're more like the Babylonians bowing down to a huge golden image that represented self-confidence. And where do self-confident prayers lead us? Well, into brokenness because we are flawed people, and if we trust in our outcome, it only perpetuates more hurt and more dissatisfaction. There is a chasm of difference between our prayers and the prayers that were like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's. Because the rest of the nation bowed down to the glory of their kingdom, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego silently stood by. They did not protest, they didn't flaunt it, but they knew that they were standing confident, not in themselves, but their God. This, of course, got them into a lot of hot water. And yet again, these young men found themselves in front of a furious king. And then the king even tempted them to conform, to turn their back on God. He said, you know, I'll just, I'll get the band to get playing again and you could just bow down and you'll all be in good standing. But if not, 
I'm going to throw you into the fiery furnace. And here's good old Nebuchadnezzar's self-confidence showing once again when he said this. He said, what God will be able to save you from my power then. And this is how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego responded. O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, may it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship your golden image that you have set up. So here's my final thought. If you are facing a fire in life, you need to have God confident prayers, which lead to a sense of his power and present despite the outcome. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not about to crumble under the pressure of self-confidence and self-preservation. Their confidence was firmly founded in the confidence they had in God. The same God that had brought their people out of Egypt into a holy land. The same God that spared them upon their exile. And ultimately when they turned down the king's food. Why were they so confident? Because God had a track record of displaying his power and his presence. Even when the situations weren't going the way they wanted it to be. But notice from these scriptures their confidence wasn't just assumptive. No, they said he is able to deliver us. And right after that came those three words we talked about in the beginning, but if not. Listen, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were well aware of but if not, that the end of this fiery trial might be their incineration. And what was the resolve of this phrase for them? Either way, we will not serve your God. We will serve God alone, Yahweh, the one true God. And the rest of the story, you know. Nebuchadnezzar is so angered by the response that he has another fit of self-confidence, has the furnace cranked up seven times hotter than usual, and had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego bound and cast into that fire. A fire so hot that killed the men that were throwing them in. And in a miracle moment, as they looked into the fire, there stood four men, unbound and alive. Four men, not three. So who was the fourth one in the fire with them? Many scholars believe that this was the one whose name would be Emmanuel. God is with us. This is a principle we see all throughout scriptures, the Emmanuel principle. That no matter what we face, no matter how atrocious or painful a situation might be, God is always with us. Matter of fact, Jesus told his disciples that he would never leave or forsake them. And friends, Jesus is the one we want going through the most painful moments of our life with because he himself is well acquainted with pain and sorrows. He is the son of God who bore all the sins of the world on his shoulders when he was executed on a cross. We often look at this story and just see the outcome that they were delivered from a fire. Yet we've forgotten that there is a fire that has to be walked through but we do not walk alone. If this is you this morning in the middle of a great fire, aim your prayer and confidence towards God, the one who is with you in your fire. And I believe that you will hear from Jesus, the one who has endured the greatest fire, gently whispering to you, resurrection day is coming. The story's not over. Yes, you can endure this hardship because I will pull you through. If you're watching this video today and you've never given your life to Christ, reach out to us in the chat box or text prayer to this number and we would be happy to walk with you in the next steps that God wants you to take in your walk with Him. If you were encouraged by this message, do me a quick favor, give it a thumbs up because it makes the algorithm push it out to other people just like you so they can be encouraged today too. Or you can go the extra mile by going to rivervalleyrockford.org slash give and making a donation there. Every single cent goes to helping other people just like you take their next step with Jesus. We are so glad that you've come to be with us here today. And whatever you're going through, know we serve a God that is with us in the fire. And he will pull you through. Be blessed as you're going. We will see you back here again next week.